He just came from San Francisco, and he came to Gilroy to live in the country. He's a little fearful dog, but we spent a lot of time just down with him, so we relax, huh, Hank? You're just relaxing. He doesn't know about all this, but um, one thing is you can see, Hanky, look at me. You can see how he, um, when he blinks real a lot and he's holding his eyes closed, um, he's got a, uh, a lower lid that kind of um, rolls in. It's an atropion, and it makes his eyes very uncomfortable. And on the eye, can you imagine your eyelashes rolling in on your eye and rubbing it raw all the time? Or so. That lid should be out like that, but it wants to roll in. So, well, the atropion we saw yesterday um, might come in. You saw how the dog was holding his eyes closed. Well, here's one that, that came in today for a little surgery. And you can notice this eye has drainage, and this eye doesn't. Well, the entropion, the, the eyelid margin should be sticking out with the eyelash, eyelashes, and even that sticking out. But then right here, it takes a turn in towards the eyeball. See that? So that eyelid, deep in there, rubs right on the eyeball all day long and causes this drainage. This eye, even though that eyelid's rubbing in, in a little bit, there's no drainage. That eye might have a little bit of entropion, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So we want to remove enough tissue to turn it out like that. But we don't want to re re uh, remove too much so it stays like that. So we don't want it to be in against the eye, and we don't want it to be way out like that. So we remove just enough. So I get my uh, hemostat, and I raise a ridge like that. And I go, okay, a couple millimeters should work. I take my scissors, and I cut along the ridge I raised like that. So now I have an area below below the turn in lid that if I sew together it will pull it out. Suture, when I suture uh, the ridge together it um, pulls the eyelid out as you can see right there you can see it start to pull it out. Looks like about the right distance and we don't want it to be too loose and too tight um, as far as the the surgery itself um, so in this case now the eyelid now is pulled out you can see now that pulled out quite a bit sometimes if they're if you do too much they actually pull out and you can see the membrane so we don't see the membranes but we can see that the eyelids being pulled out and um, it will relax with time and go in just like that and that's what we want so the entropion's been corrected with a little wedge resection of the skin on this side. Don't want these sutures just to poke anybody in the eye, so I cut those short. The biggest thing in doing an entropion surgery or any surgery is remember, you can't tell the dog, don't fool with the sutures. They will. They'll paw at them, they'll bite at them. In this case, in plastic surgery, we have to be real careful because if the dog rubs out his sutures, then we have a big ugly wound again that's not going to heal as nice. This wound will heal really nice. But if it's all torn apart again, it won't. Well, here's the eye surgery now, and uh, something happened that was weird, and it happens to laugh sometimes. Uh, they, he's, he was in it, he's all wet because as he was covering for anesthesia, his temperature went up to 107. So we had to wet him down with the hose, and, um, and his temperature dropped down to 102, so it's called malignant hypothermia. But you can see his eye now. It's swollen, so it's sticking out, but uh, sticking out. But you can't really see it very good in this light. But um, that's what it looks like after surgery. It's kind of it gets real puffy. You can see he's got the cone around him. So the anesthetic in this case caused this lab to get a malignant hypothermia. When they're recovering from anesthetic, sometimes just the anesthetic agents themselves or muscle quivering will cause their temp temperature to shoot up. So we wet him down with the hose, and it dropped right down to 102. And we put the cone on so he wouldn't tear apart the nice work that I did. And that's how we do it in Gilroy, California. Here's Dr. Greg. And remember, labs have the most ear problems in the world. So if you want to find out why your dog has itchy skin or ear problems, check out www.dogdishdiet.com.